Hey there everyone, it's Crud9 like usual. Anyways, let's begin the much requested training guide for the most recent patch, the Rising Heroes update. Or we could just say it's a training guide for mid-2014, that works as well. Keep in mind, this guide is made for those who are unfunded as well as funded, so don't worry about your range and just have fun. Feel free to try out higher level areas, though it's not recommended unless you have some funding to back it up. However, you might be surprised depending on your class, so always give it a shot. Also, please don't forget that you can press W in MapleStory and type out the monster's name or the map to find out its exact location from where you are. Finally, one last note. The Maple Guide option in Maple isn't too bad actually. You're free to follow that guide and experiment or just follow mine for where I trained and where I will be training. So with that all covered, let's begin the training guide. So now that you're in MapleStory, I congratulate you on either your first new character in the entire game or just a new character in general. Off the bat, I recommend that you stick with your character class's beginner quests, mainly because jumping straight into training at level 1 isn't the greatest of ideas. So just follow the quest guidelines, fulfill the requirements, and you should be leveling with ease. At level 10, you can either continue with your class's quest line, normally up to level 20 or 30, or from level 10 till 20, you can visit any of the golem maps over at Golem Temple. My personal recommendation, however, is either the mixed or red golems. They are both great maps, they are both moderately condensed, and it really just depends on your personal preference of map layout. Also, your class will play a little bit of a part in which map is better, but more or less you're only level 10 at the moment or 15, so any map you pick is good. You're pretty close to second job advancements. If you're an explorer, I hope you know what class you want. Anyways, from 20 till 30, it will really depend on where your class is located. Or you could just skip over to the new area if you want to change a pace. So, if you're an explorer, then visit the giant tree for evil and cursed eyes. If your range is a bit above normal, or you feel like testing out your character's limits, visit the cursed eyes. Obviously their level is a bit higher, and their HP is a bit higher, but the spawn and experience is a lot better there. If you're from Pantheon, that being an Angelic Buster or a Kaiser, visit Kalung. That's pretty much of a weird name, huh? They are located in the East Pantheon Forest, and I personally like these out of the three. Finally, if you're from the Resistance branch, go to Baby Boulder Munchers. They are located over at Rocky Road. The experience here is great, the map is pretty condensed and is pretty flat, but do bring some potions in because they can hurt. Well, now that you're level 30, go get your second job advancement and get those new skills. Well, you're going to be moving around here and there now, but you're level 30. So I recommend Boulder Munchers over at Ore Trail. The experience is really good if I may say so myself. The map isn't too big either, so going around to kill the monsters isn't too much of a chore. Just stock up on some HP potions because they can hit hard, but it's nothing too bad. Then, once you hit around level 35, go visit Gold Beach, more specifically Soft Wave Beach 1, where flying fish slimes are located. The spawn is pretty much everywhere, so getting experience isn't tough at all, especially if your class is great at killing multiple mobs. Since you should be level 40 by now, you can either stay at flying fish slimes for another 5 levels being 45, or you can go to Muddy Sprout Monsters at Deep Mire, or better known as Kerning Swamp. Although it's a bit tough to move around the map, this is really one of the best spots to train at, at this level, and just for a bit longer. Well, being level 50, this is slowly where your training options grow quite a lot. Though I normally shy away from questlines, I think doing the Rian questline is both quick and it gives you a mask. It also brings up your range quite a bit more thanks to the mask. You should be getting a quest notification or check the maple guide for the Rian quest. It's a pretty simple, straightforward quest line that can be completed within 30 minutes. Once you finish the Rian quest line, or if you want to skip the Rian quest line completely, go visit Wooden and Rocky Masks over at the excavation site. Simply because there's going to be a quest open to you saying just to kill a few of both and you're going to get a few levels out of it along with being able to train there, so it is definitely recommended since it's literally free experience getting from the quests as you train. Well, say you want a break from training, a very long break. 
Go to Liderbium Party Quest. Why? It's an easy level at level 50 till 70. Note, the higher the level, the less experience you get. But it's actually really good till level 70. I recommend doing it from 50 to 60 or 50 to run out of your 10 daily runs. If you want to avoid period altogether for a tad bit longer, go try out Copper Drakes in Sleepywood. The map is called Silent Swamp, and oh boy, is the spawn great. I had no issues training there from level 48 till 70 on my Evan. It's a great spot and absolutely one of my favorites. It's also something that you should keep in mind. In all of MapleStory, this has to be one of the best maps to train at, period. Now that you're level 60, congratulations on third job advancement. You're going to want to go back to the excavation site for just another 5 levels. You're going to actually have quests open to you once again that tell you to just kill the enemies. With this quest line, just simply kill the enemies along the trail, and you should end up around level 63-64. With that, just stay in the area up until 65 where you can move on to the next area. Around level 65, go visit the last map in Sleepywood, the Forbidden Altar, that has the monster Toro Spears, and see if it's to your liking. I personally recommend this map because the spawn is very very condensed and it's easy to kill the monsters. But if you do not like this map, simply go back to Drake's or try out Wild Cargo. Just because I trained at Drake's till level 70 doesn't mean it'll work for everyone. From level 70 to 140, yes you heard me right, go to Romeo and Juliet Party Quest. Seriously, go. I don't even know what to say. I went there from level 75 till 120 on my Evan with my friends. It's insanely great just to stay on the 4th stage and train. Seriously, don't even bother finishing off the party quest. Just stay in stage 4 and train to your heart's content. Though I would recommend you having a Kana and somebody with holy symbol, whether it's a bishop, phantom, or even a beast tamer. Seriously, go there. I don't know how to recommend it enough. If for whatever reason Romeo and Juliet is not available, go visit the Garden of Darkness too to train on some old school enemies, Lucida. Yes, they are actually good again, and once again, like back in good old 2005, they are a level 70 training spot. Sadly, only two people will actually get my reference, but the spawn in the map is great. Seriously, take this one into consideration. Another well-received map is Ice Valley 2, where White Fangs are located. Although not a bad map, the slippery physics will make some people want to go elsewhere because there is ice on the floor where you're walking. Sahel Desert 2 is highly recommended if you have a rush ability. Although you may not want to go here straight at level 70, you may want to go here late in the level 70 area. The monsters there are the Scorpions and Sand Rats. Like I said, you're going to need a bit of a higher range to do extremely well here, though it's not necessary if your level is adequate. I would recommend this around level 77 to 78. From level 80 to 90, you can continue at Sahel Desert 2 if it's to your liking, or visit the Roids and New Heroids in Lab C1 or C2. However, any of the monsters in Lab A, B, or C will give you a decent amount of experience. Just play around with the map that suits you and your class better. From 90 to 100 or so, continue with Roids and your Heroids, or visit Rash in West Leafree Forest. The spawn here is pretty good and there's only 3 platforms so there isn't too much traveling between spots. One of my new favorite maps in MapleStory is the Blue Spear over at Blue Spear Pasture. Where has this map been all my life? Simply do the small Helesium quests which is literally get to level 90, talk to an NPC in Pantheon, and kill 10 mobs. Then all of Helesium is open to you, and welcome all the nice new maps. Blue Spear is a great map, and one that I highly recommend. Another great map in the area is called the Forest of Coexistence, which has Yellow Spear and Dino Dawn. Spear is a hidden gem that I think is a great training spot. Also, the music here is amazing if you play with Maple Audio on. Really, give Spears a shot. Also, the other monster is called Dino Don. What's not to love about the area? Welcome to fourth job advancement. Welcome to new skills, shiny skills. Alright, training guide. 
At Unbalanced Time, you'll find Dual Ghost Pirates. The map is pretty big, so training here isn't too bad. The experience is okay here as well. Just get your motion going about how to train in the map. You probably want to go from top to bottom and not from bottom to top. Another decent map in Ludibrium is the Toy Trojans over at Sky Turrets 5. The map is really good and killing them should not be an issue at level 100. There's plenty of them to kill, so go kill. If Ludibrium is not your cup of tea, however, go back to Leafry. There's blue dragon turtles at the entrance to Dragon Forest. Again, a very large map, but the dragon turtles tend to spawn pretty quickly and they tend to be pretty bundled up, so killing them should not be an issue for you whatsoever. From 100 to 140, go visit Monster Park Extreme. This is a quite a highly recommended map from a lot of people. And a personal recommendation is that when you're level 139, around 95%, you should leave the area and re-enter the map, because once you pass level 140, you will not be allowed back in. So why not extend your welcome and get a few more levels in the process? Hopefully you'll get the best map in Monster Park, which I think is the Ludibrium map. Once you're level 105, you're able to go to Evolution System Link 3. It's still a pretty good place to train at actually. Just make sure you get some good cores to enhance your experience, such being a higher level mob, higher HP for the mob, and a population core for the mob, and you're all set to go. Just make sure you're in Link 3 and not Link 2 or 4 or any of the others, because Link 3 is probably the best one to train at. Once you hit level 120, I would recommend you visit the Red Nose Pirate Den 2, which has the monsters, captains, and crews. It's a really old map that people still like and it's still really good to go to. The map is long, but there's only two platforms. So really do give this a shot, especially, especially if you have a rush type ability. Just go, it's a great experience. Dimensional Invasion is a great spot to go to once you're at 140. However, if you do not have funding, meaning you don't have percent luck gear or percent strength gear, or percent int or whatever, then you're going to have a really rough time training here. The reason is that the monsters have extremely high experience, but because of that, they have extremely high HP values. So, I recommend that you get party members if you do not have funding. However, if you are really funded, then definitely go solo this because the experience is amazing. Well, sadly, past level 140, there aren't too many places to train at, mainly due to experience scaling. However, the best map that you could probably train at would be Mysterious Path 3, which has Selkie Jr. and Slimy. However, any of the Mysterious Path maps will work fine. Another option to you at 140 is to visit the Temple of Time and complete the questline to get Memory Lane 5 which has Chief Memory Guardian, Road of Regrets 5 which has Chief Qualm Guardian, and Road of Oblivion 5 which has the Chief Oblivion Guard, but obviously each new area will require a higher level, but these are just something to keep in mind. Once you hit level 165, at the moment there isn't too much you can do. The best map to train at is Second Drill Hall, which hosts the official Night B. Simply enough, there is no better map than this as of the moment. You can come here at level 160, but you will require a door from a bishop or a phantom, or a teleport from a guildmate, or a hyper teleport rock. Hall of Honor is another option, however it's not recommended. It's something that you could probably kill on your free time alone, but even with a party, you're much better off at Second Drill Hall. But if you want to just kill some time and just solo for a little bit, Hall of Honor is an option. Sadly, what happened to Hall of Honor also applies to Warrior Grounds. The golems were insanely nerfed to the point where it's kind of pointless to even go there. With or without a party, past level 193 is just a normal mob now. You're still much better off going to Official Night B at Second Drill Hall with a party. This part applies to all levels. Some quests and events like the Sengoku and Red Leaf High is pretty much great for all levels, low and high. So utilize these events to the best of your ability, both for the gear that they offer and the experience that they give. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. I personally believe that these are the best spots that you can train at. I have my Evan as proof for it, so if you want to check out anything that my Evan did and to know the exact way that I trained, check out my Evan's Life series. The videos are on my channel and click that annotation on the left 
to watch them. Also, if you want to add any good training spots that I may not have listed, just post it in the comment section below for others to see. Oh, and if you like video games, click that link on the right. It'll bring you to my gaming channel, ArcD9. I play League of Legends there and some console gaming there. So, subscribe, you know you want to. Anyways, see you guys later and take care.